I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for the Lord and in his words I hope. Some words from Psalm 130. Good morning and welcome to our online parish worship this morning on Sunday the 19th of July. Your word is a lantern to our feet and a light upon our path. We begin our worship with a time of confession when we bring before God our transgressions. The response to Father forgive us is save us and help us. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you, Father forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say, Father forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you, by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and ensure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Romans chapter 8 verses 12 to 25. Therefore brothers and sisters we have an obligation but it is not to the flesh to live according to it for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit re you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we await eagerly for our, for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. This morning's Gospel is taken from Matthew, chapter 13, beginning at the 24th verse. Then Jesus used another story to teach them. Jesus said, God's kingdom is like a man who planted good seed in his field. That night, while everyone was asleep, the man's enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat and then left. Later the wheat grew and heads of grain grew on the plants. 
But at the same time, the weeds also grew. Then the man's servants came to him and said, You planted good seed in your field. Where did the weeds come from? The man answered, An enemy planted weeds. The servants asked, Do you want us to go and pull up the weeds? He answered, No, because when you pull up the weeds, you might also pull up the wheat. Let the weeds and the wheat grow together until the harvest time. At the harvest time, I will tell the workers this. First, gather the weeds and tie them together to be burned. Then, gather the wheat and bring it to my barn. Then, Jesus left the people and went into the house. His followers came to him and said, Explain to us the meaning of the story about the weeds in the field. He answered, The man who planted the good seed in the field is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the people in God's kingdom. The weeds are the people who belong to the evil one. And the enemy who planted the bad seed is the devil. The harvest is the end of time. And the workers who gather God's angels. The weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire. It will be the same at the end of time. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will find the people who cause sin and all those who do evil. The angels will take those people out of his kingdom. They will throw them into the place of fire. There the people will be crying and grinding their teeth with pain. Then the godly people will shine like the sun. They will be in the kingdom of their father. You people who hear me, listen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When you think about all the evil in the world, do you wonder why God just doesn't get rid of it? We've been through some really difficult times lately and we've seen lots of suffering. So why doesn't God just sort it out? Why doesn't God pull up all the weeds? It's a good question, isn't it? It's a question I get asked quite a lot. I'm pretty sure that God could stop all the evil things from happening. But God's reign in the world seems to be a bit more complicated than that. And I'm sorry to disappoint, but I don't think I have all the answers to such a big question. But I think our reading from Matthew's Gospel today does give us a little clue as to why that might be and how we might respond. In the passage, the farmer tells the slaves not to pull up the weeds straight away, but to wait until the wheat and the weeds have both grown so that the wheat can be gathered into the barn. God wants to gather all the wheat into the barn so that he doesn't allow the destruction of evil to happen. God wants every single one of us to have the chance to respond to the good news of Jesus. He invites us all to be gathered in and we are called to help make the harvest bountiful and God waits for the right time to harvest. And it seems to me that waiting is a really important part of that process. We've been doing a lot of waiting lately, haven't we? waiting in queues to get into the supermarket, waiting for the government's daily briefings, waiting for test results, waiting to hug our grandchildren, waiting to connect to a Zoom meeting or the hairdressers to open. And we're waiting to get back to normal, whatever that means. Waiting is hard and waiting is frustrating. I think the farmer and the servants must have felt frustrated when they watched all the weeds grow alongside the wheat, but they needed to be patient. And you'll notice that God is patient in the parable too. 
God doesn't enjoy the sight of a weedy wheat field, nor does he want to harvest too soon and risk damaging the good crops. And perhaps you might say that waiting for God to do God's thing in God's own time is a bit of a woolly explanation. It might seem that God doesn't care or that God isn't active in the world. But we know that that isn't true because God acted through Jesus. Unlike the first hearers of this parable, we live in the light of knowing what the full purpose of Jesus was and is about. We know that God's actions through Jesus were dramatic and active and world-changing. When we wait longingly for God to put the world right, we must remind ourselves that he has already done just that through the resurrection of Jesus. What we're waiting for is the ending of that story. We know that God cares through the actions of the Holy Spirit in the world, in our parish and in our everyday lives. God cares. God cares deeply and is active. When we wait on God patiently, we must wait in the light of Christ. God is with us in the wait. God is active in the wait. Some words from Isaiah chapter 40. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of our salvation, guide us and teach us in your truth as we wait on you. God, thank you for your promise that those who wait on you will renew their strength. Fulfill this in our lives. Empower us to run and not grow weary and to walk and not faint. And in a moment of quiet, we ask God for strength for ourselves and others. God, thank you that you are active in our lives and in the world for your grace and mercy. In a moment of quiet, we bring to mind the times when God has been active in our lives. God, help us to wait patiently with hope. Let's take some time to tell God of our hopes. God, you wait to gather the harvest as we are called to sow seeds. Please show us where there are seeds to be sown. God, remembering your promise of eternal life, we bring to you those who are dying and ask that you bring them hope. We pray for those who have died and all who mourn, naming those we know quietly to you now. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. 
pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today your daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Giving thanks for the saving death and resurrection of Jesus, we ask him to be with us now in our prayer of spiritual communion. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given us for all the pains and insults you have borne for us. Since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with us today as we offer ourselves to you. Hear our prayers for others and for ourselves and keep us in your care. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. In the name of Christ. Amen. In the name of Christ, 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 Amen.